Hello everybody, uh, this is Jean Granger, author, here today and uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about my series, The Robinswood Story. And I thought it would be a nice idea to talk about it here in this beautiful estate called Mount Congreve, which is in County Waterford. Robinswood is also set in County Waterford. And so um, this is sort of the idea or the inspiration for that series of books. And that series of books, there are three books in the series called, the first one is called uh, What Once Was True, the second is called Return to Robinswood, and the third one is called Trials and Tribulations. And because I was a huge fan of Upstairs Downstairs uh, back years ago when it came out, and also modern Downton Abbey, all that sort of stuff, I'm a sucker for a period drama, um, I thought to myself, wouldn't it be interesting to tell that story from the Irish perspective? And so that's what I've done, hopefully, in the Robinswood story. Um, so these estates are dotted all over Ireland and they were large houses with enormous estates primarily owned by wealthy English landlords, um, many of whom were members of parliament um, in London and represented their constituencies here in Ireland. Um, and I suppose um, there are sometimes seen as a contentious part of our history but nonetheless they make up a very important part of the fabric of what has become modern Ireland. Uh, many of these houses date from the 1700s um, and were being built right up to the turn of the 19th or the 20th century and so um, they were a source of tremendous employment. Um, in a local area the vast majority of the people would work on the estate. The women in the house as domestic servants and the men in the grounds, uh, gardening, farming, um, taking care of animals, machinery and so on. Um, it must also be said that even though these houses are seen as symbols of British imperialism to a large extent, um, many of the owners of houses such as these were great uh, supporters of Irish uh, independence. And so it, would be, uh, it wouldn't be fair to say that they were all um, sort of in favour of the subjugation of Irish people. That wouldn't be true to say. Uh, some of them were, certainly, but many of them were not. And they were here for so long that they were what we call the Anglo-Irish, but they were Irish. They were born and raised here. Now, many of them went to school in England, and we see that in the Kennefics and the Murphys. So the, in the Robinswood story, the Kennefics are the family that own the estate, Robinswood, and the Murphys work for them. And the Kennefic children uh, would have been raised um, as aristocrats. They would have been educated at private boarding schools in England and uh, they would have mixed with people of their own social class, of whom there would be many around this area. So hunt balls and tennis parties and tea dances and all that sort of thing would have been their um, sort of activities. Um, then working for them we have the Murphys. So Dermot and Isabella Murphy and their three daughters, Kate, Eve and Ashling, and they all work on the estate. And by the time we meet the two families, uh, war is brewing in England again. It's the late 1930s. And um, the first story, what once was true, um, sort of follows the path of the two families that are kind of intermingled uh, through their association with the house Robinswood. Robinswood has been run on a shoestring because like many of these houses, uh, the sources of income were ever dwindling. There were many of them built at the time of the uh, British Empire occupying, you know, um, great big swathes of what was considered the New World and, the, and they were bringing back all the minerals, all the, the um, rubber and the spices and the silks and all that sort of stuff um, from the exotic parts of the world and making a lot of money doing that. But of course, as time went on and pesky natives wanting their independence like us, um, that put a, a spanner in the works of the British Empire. And so the funds were ever dwindling. Um, so what brought about the idea for the Robinswood story for me was we were in a, a similar house to this one. And I saw a photograph on the wall of three sisters, three daughters of the house. And um, I kind of just had this idea that I would, I would write a story, a kind of an upstairs downstairs story, but set here in Ireland. Um, so I really enjoyed writing it. It's, um, it's a story of war. It's a story of passion, it's a story of friendship, it's a story of family um, and uh, people seem to really enjoy it which is very gratifying for me. Um, it, this came about really, this my fixation and my fascination 
with this era in history came about because at one point I was uh, researching the role of Irish women in the Second World War for a um, historical paper I was writing. And to that end, I interviewed lots and lots of women all over Ireland who had served in various capacities with the Allied forces, be it in the Land Army, um, in the, the, um, the Women's Navy, the Women's Army, um, the Ambulance Corps, various different things, stenographers and typists and translators. And uh, I was always interested to know, it was, it was easy to understand why the people who grew up in houses such as this uh, signed up, because they found themselves and believed themselves to be culturally British. You know, they were educated in England, their parents' titles were granted by the British Crown, and so they felt that Ireland was part of the empire, it was de facto part of the empire, and that it was their duty to go and serve their country. But what really intrigued me was the, the poorer Irish Catholic girls who also signed up and went. And I couldn't really understand why they would do that because, you know, Ireland was neutral during the Second World War, relatively safe. There was enough to eat here. Uh, people weren't risking life and limb every minute of the day. So it would have seemed like a much more comfortable place to be than, say, living in London during the Blitz. But what was really interesting is when we interviewed these women, all of whom were elderly by the time I met them, um, but they were young girls, you know, late teens and early 20s. And what I kind of hadn't considered so much is that in the late 30s, opportunities for advancement for women were really few and far between, particularly if you were poor. And so uh, the expectation was that a girl would, you know, go to school up to maybe only the age of maybe 12 or 13, just basic education, uh, reading and writing. And then they would work at home on the farm until it was time for them to marry and then they would marry a local boy and they would with a bit of luck he might have a small bit of a farm himself um, and they would live a life exactly as their parents had done having children um, and live out their lives that way so the advent of war um, brought about opportunities for excitement for change for something different to see other places to meet people from other cultures to uh, dress up in those smart uniforms and they, many of people, grabbed it with both hands. Um, it was also, you know, a reasonably good salary as well. So there was lots of reasons, but many of them um, went for that reason. And so armed with that information, I began writing the Robinswood story. And uh, I had intended it only to be one book, but I realized as soon as I got into the story that there was more for those people to say. So. While it begins in the opening stages of the Second World War, the second book um, takes us to the post-war period. It uh, brings us to the deep southern states of the United States, um, down into Mississippi. Um, it touches on uh, parts of the American Civil Rights Movement, um, the Irish struggle for independence, um, the financial difficulties, of the 1950s um, and so uh, and continuing that into the third book uh, Trials and Tribulations it it looks at various different things that were happening in the world at that time through the lens and through the eyes of the Murphys and the Kennefics who though from different classes are completely and inextricably linked um, the book has been downloaded I can't remember but many 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 thousands of times um, tens of thousands of times and um, people seem to really enjoy it and feel a, a sense of connection to the characters so um, if you haven't yet I would love you to read it uh, the first book is called what once was true and it's the Robinswood story by Jean Granger thank you